In today's video, we'll be learning about the ionization energy of alkali metals. Here we have two questions. Are the ionization energies of alkali metals high or low as compared to the other metals in the periodic table? The second one, what happened to the ionization energy of alkali metals as we move from lithium to cesium along a group? So, let's see them one by one. The first one, will the ionization energies of alkaline metals high or low? For that, you need to know the electronic configuration. So have a look at their electronic configuration. Now we see that the alkaline metals have one electron in their valence shell, right? So now, generally we can denote the valence electron in the alkali metals as ns1 now there is only one electron this will be weakly held weakly held with the with the what with the nucleus since this one is weakly held with the nucleus that's why the ionization energy is low in the case of alkali metals as we compare with the other elements of the periodic table. As simple as that. And what is ionization energy? The amount of energy required to remove the loosely held electron from the valence shell. Okay? So that is the answer. Now, this one. What happened to the ionization energy of alkali metals as we move from lithium to cesium along a group again have a look at the electronic configuration now as we move down the group what happened we see that the distance of the valence electron from the nucleus keeps on increasing right so suppose this suppose that this is the distance of the valence electron in case of lithium then in that of sodium it will it will be large as compared to that of lithium right because of the addition of more shell and then for potassium it will be again large distance of the electron from the nucleus so it goes on in this way now which one will be easy to remove obviously cesium francium because the distance of the valence electron in the case of cesium is very very large as compared to these other elements so what can we say about the trend of the ionization energy in the case of alkali metals we have lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium so this one will have high ionization energy than sodium sodium than potassium potassium than rubidium and rubidium than cesium that means ionization energy will be less in the case of cesium and more in the case of more in the case of lithium because the distance because in lithium the distance of the valence electron from the nucleus is small so it becomes very difficult to remove this one electron so this is the trend of the ionization energy in the case of alkali metals now you have known about that now we come to this one second ionization energy now what is this second ionization energy suppose uh, i consider lithium with atomic number three electronic configuration is 1s2 2s1 okay now if i want to remove this one electron i have to apply ionization energy right so this is the first one that i have applied in order to remove this one now after removing this one lithium will change into lithium plus that means the electronic configuration will be now only 1s2 now if i want to remove again one electron from this 1s orbital will it be easy no even if i apply that means that is the second ionization energy this second ionization energy will be very high why the question is why why is the second ionization energies in the case of uh, alkali metals are high okay why are they high because just like in this example 
when you have removed one electron, it has attained this configuration. Now, this configuration is a stable. It is a noble gas configuration, which is that of what? This is the configuration of helium, and helium is a noble gas. And we know that noble gas are stable, okay? They are stable. That's why if you want to remove another electron from this 1s2 orbital, okay, that is the second ionization energy, it will be very, very high because of the stable noble gas configuration. So it goes the same thing for the other elements, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and so on. That's all.